Hey there, Cliff here back for week 10 of my vlog as I teach myself to draw. Um, this week I'm going to continue switching some things up. I'm going to start focusing on the YouTube aspect of this and maybe a few other aspects of it as well. Um, I think that'll make things a little bit more interesting. The YouTube channel is actually part of my strategy to teach myself to draw, which may sound a little confusing right now, but I'll go into that in detail in the future, um, maybe a little bit in this video. Um, so yeah, let's just dive into things and see where we get. So this week I started off by filling a 100 sheet newsprint pad with charcoal drawings. Um, I did this mostly for a video that I was trying to make, um, which I'll link to in the description. I also wanted a break from the small notepad drawings that I've been doing. This pad of newsprint drawings took about 10 hours over four days. So I started working on it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I really like the feeling of drawing on bigger paper, but I have more practice drawing in the notebooks and smaller paper. Um, so I really want to get better at big drawing. For those drawings, I just kind of wanted to mix up a whole bunch of different kinds of drawings. I did um, some abstract drawings, some imaginative drawings, and some reference drawings. My hope was that just by mixing these things up, I would get better at charcoal and large drawing in general, as I said before. Uh, and I do think I made some improvements, but I didn't feel like I had any major leaps um, or obvious lessons. I did feel like I was getting better at shading, especially um, in just the application of charcoal. So I think part of this is that your brain learns a lot of things without you realizing it. Um, you aren't always aware of the things that you're learning. And that's because your brain is complex and like what you're aware of it doing is such a very small amount of what it's doing. So I was surprised by how much I like some of the drawings, especially towards the end of the pad, even though I didn't necessarily notice any major leaps in my skill. I did notice I was having a lot of trouble with like proportion, especially since, you know, I'm basically looking at the pad from an angle as I'm drawing. Became aware of that about halfway through and started trying to address it by, you know, standing and looking down at it a bit more and also just being more aware of it and trying to account for that. I'm sure in the future with practice, I'll get better at that. After those charcoal drawings, I did a few drawings in the figure drawing notebook I'm working on, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time on that this week. I think I only spent an hour or so working on that notebook. Maybe two. So in that book, notebook, I did a few life drawing. And then I kind of did some drawings out of an anatomy book. And that's kind of all there is to that. Um, so the last thing I did this week was I set up some of those abstract watercolor uh, paintings where I put down masking fluid and then did a wash over it and then you can peel off the masking fluid and you get this weird kind of white space that you can doodle in. So I started some of those. I did the wash on all of them, but I only got through about half of the stack with the doodles. So I'll finish those off next week. Also next week, I kind of want to shift focus from figure drawing to perspective drawing. I think I'm having some shortcomings in my ability to draw things like the parts of the body in perspective, which isn't surprising um, because I'm very new at that still. So I just want to kind of work on my perspective of drawing ability in general, and hopefully that'll help. So another thing that I talked about um, at the beginning of the video is I kind of want to start sort of, as some might say, parting the kimono and talking about the aspects of the YouTube aspect and the blogging aspect and maybe the photography. Since I've started this project, my view on YouTube channels has changed quite a bit. You never really think about the guy or the girl in the video sitting there likely alone with their camera and talking to it. You never really think about that until you start doing that yourself. And it is a very strange thing. It's a very strange thing to do. A major reason of why I'm doing this channel is that it's part of my learning strategy 
to teach myself to draw. Part of the goal is to motivate myself. So, so like, part of what I want to do is have something I can show people where it's like, if you are new to drawing, look at this, this is what it's really like to learn. And I think this can be extended to a lot of things. Like, we always see the end product of somebody who has learned a lot. You know, maybe, maybe somebody who's been drawing for five or ten years. Generally, that's what you see. Like, the product after all of the work. You, and you rarely see the work that goes into getting there. Part of my goal for this channel is to show the work of getting there and talk about that work and how you can maybe speed that process up. But there's other things I'm learning as I'm doing this. I'm learning how to make these videos. I'm learning how to run a YouTube channel. I'm learning how to blog. And that's not a trivial aspect of this. It's actually, it's very integral to how I am teaching myself to draw. The video that I put up earlier this week is the beginning of maybe a series of videos uh, where I'll start talking about that kind of thing specifically but those themes will start showing up in these vlogs. I mean, a major part of learning anything is connecting it to your world. And anytime you're learning something, you have to connect it with other things that you know and other things you're learning. So, so when you're learning something, you never go into it without having known something else, right? Except for when you're, you know, an infant, but even then that could be questionable. So you're always coming at something from somewhere and you're always using what you're learning for something else. Like, nothing stands alone. I'm totally off script here. So generally every week what I do is I, uh, what I've been doing is, at least for the last few weeks what I've been doing is I've been writing up kind of the blog post that goes with this and then I don't necessarily read it out but that gives me a sense, like I write about what I learned and that gives me a sense of what to talk about in the video because it helps me it helps me solidify what I've learned into being able to talk about it. Um, and with drawing, it's very hard to talk about what you're learning because a lot of what you're learning is sort of in the background of your mind. It's, you know, being able to see a little bit better or being able to capture a feeling a little bit better visually, but not linguistically. Um, there's a sort of separation between your visual understanding and your symbolic understanding of the world. Although those things are definitely interrelated um, because everything in your mind is interrelated. I feel like I'm rambling at this point, but the point I'm trying to make is that, so my goal for this channel and this vlog and my blog is to be able to show the process from the beginning. And I mean, I have other goals, you know, I need to grow the channel so that people actually can learn from it, which means a few things, right? So it means that my channel needs to be entertaining enough for people to watch it. Um, it needs to be interesting enough for people to watch it. It needs to be findable. The content has to be fairly decent quality. And for me to put a lot of time into it, I need to find some way to get something back out of it, right? I can't put 10 or 20 hours a week into running a channel forever. I'm a stay-at-home father right now, so I have time to do something like that. But eventually, if it doesn't start making some money or leading to something else that makes money, I can't do it forever. And so these are all very real aspects of YouTube that you know, some people talk about and, but it's easy to kind of wink and look the other way, right? But I think uh, going forward, I want to be a bit more open and honest about these things because I, they are integral to my learning strategy. None of these things stand alone. So for example, this will be my ninth vlog video, um, which is a very low number. And it'll be my 10th video, considering I put another video up this week. So, so far I've been doing this for about 10 weeks. Um, and, you know, that's a fairly significant amount of time. But I only have about 64 or 65 views as of this morning on my channel. 
and I would say, you know, 20 to 30 of those, so maybe half, are me checking the processing or the volume or something like that after it goes up. Also, you know, friends maybe checking it out. So I'd say only about 30 to maybe 40 views are actually people finding my channel and watching my videos. And I don't expect that to change for a long time. I don't expect any sort of rapid spike in viewers. Which means I also don't expect to be able to make any money off of this for a long time. And that's a reality that, you know, you have to face if you're going to try and do this. And it's possible that my channel never grows. I mean, it's possible that I never make it entertaining enough or interesting enough or findable enough. And that's just reality. So yeah, I think going forward, I'm going to uh, try to be open and honest and a little bit more thorough in the realities that surround my attempt to teach myself to draw. Because that attempt, it has some purpose. I do hope to be able to use my skill to make money somehow uh, once I'm skilled enough. Um, I don't know if that'll be like selling art or doing some sort of illustration work or something like that, or even just using it to communicate about ideas in a more like business setting. Um, all of those are valid uses for drawing skills to make money. And I mean, I also want to continue to enjoy it and balancing those two things is tricky. It's definitely tricky. Um, that's all I have to say about that for now. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like this, feel free to like and subscribe and share it. I hope this gives you a glimpse into what it's like to learn to draw and run a YouTube channel. Um, thanks for watching.